before we go to chapter one, I would like you to refresh your memory about some of the principle of static, which is very important for me. Those are equilibrium. So everybody is familiar with the equilibrium. Of course, we have 2D problem and we have 3D problem. So 2D problem, generally the forces have X component and Y component. So you have three equations. I'm not going to put it down here for equilibrium. So anytime you draw a free body diagram, there is a forces and there could be moment, but the moment is one dimensional. Usually if you are working on the X, Y plane, so the moment will be about the Z axis or the K uh, direction. Yes or no? So those are the three equations. In 3D, you are going to have six equations. And those six equations, again, is sigma fx equal to zero, sigma fy equal to zero, sigma fz equal to zero, which are the component along x, y, z. Also, three moments, which are the moment about x axis, y axis, and z axis. You should be able to do that through this exercise. One of these problems was 3D, and you are supposed to do that. So, and in this class, we never use cross product. You should be able to use your right hand rule by taking moment about x axis, y axis, and z axis. Actually, if you look in the book, they never use R because these are the simpler problem, but you should be able to do that. I hope that you have practiced that in your static class. So therefore, so I'm going to be putting it down sigma m about x axis equal to zero, sigma m about the y-axis, practice that one, and sigma m about the z-axis, which in general, we can put it in a vector format, but this is the breakdown of it in a scalar equation. Then we need the centroid, and of course in the centroid we have x bar, which is equal to summation of xi ai, divided by summation of AI, and we have Y bar, which is summation of YI AI, divided by summation of, uh, of course, everybody knows that the denominator are the areas, yes or no. What are the numerator? Any idea? Product, X and A, no. It's not a product of X and A, it has a meaning very important meaning and it's going to appear several places in, in a strength of material. I'm going to, for time being, because I don't know how many of you remember that, which is very important. This is QY, we call it, and this is QX. It has a meaning, it has a name, it has some special specification. And you, uh, through the example, I'm going to show you one more time because in a static, I put a lot of emphasis on this Q which is not as exactly you say, the product of X and A. It is, has a lot of meaning on it and it's going to be used in strength of mat material a lot. Okay, I'm glad you put it in the red. That means you are going to pay attention to that. Yes or no? Okay, and of course we are going to have moment of? Moment of inertia. Of course, moment of inertia, everybody knows the moment of inertia of a rectangular shape with respect to the axis that passes through its center is equal to what? 1 12 of base time height cubic, that's right. And then we have for the circle as well, which is pi over 2, these are ix. So let's call it ix equal to that, ix, I'm sorry, it is pi over 4 radius to the power of four. Of course, the unit is inch to the power of four. See, this is very important to recognize this process. A is the area, yes or no? It has the unit of length to the power of two, yes? Q, we call it moment, first moment of area, and that's the unit of length to the power of three. Why? Because it's a product of X and area. Everybody understand? That. And the moment of inertia, which sometimes is called second moment, will be length to the power of four, because the y squared dA or x squared dA, as you recall from static. Yes or no? Correct? I hope you remember that. Yeah. Okay. There, there is the, the, now, you, this 
is not sufficient to know the moment of inertia of special shape like this. You need to know parallel axis theory. So that is very important, parallel axis theory. So therefore, you have here, you say I x equal to I x prime. X prime passes through the centroid of the object plus the area times distance square. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do an example and do all of this in one example that you see how it's being applied. Okay? So those are the subjects that I'm sure you already know from your static, especially if you just passed the static. Yes, hopefully with A or B. I had one student who got C, by the way, I want you to know the last past quarter. He asked me to lower to C minus because he said he wants to take it again. So I want you to know, this happened. I actually, I have one also in 219, he did the same thing. I have two students requesting me to reduce the C to C minus in order to, that's, that important will be for you in future classes, static, because you are going to use it a lot. You will see it here. Anyhow, let's do our first example about this subject before I go into the real strength of material. So go, let's go back to this problem. There are a couple of problems in your handout, but then I decided to do this for the other class, so I'm going to do the same for you guys. And therefore, draw the picture. It's not in your handouts, but this picture is simple, so we can do it here. So here, let's say this is the cross-section of an object that you are designing. And let's say that it is 75 millimeter by 50 attached to a plate here and like this. These are not in a scale, so therefore I just put here 200 millimeter is the width. This is the thickness of the plate is 25 millimeter. The height here is 150 millimeter. These are all in millimeter if I'm not putting some of them just, just to save time. And here the thickness of this plate also is 25 millimeter. This is the object made of these three pieces together. This is the cross section of a beam or a column in future in this class. That's what we are going to talk always about the cross section of the beam or column. Is that understood or a structure? This is the cross section. Now what we want to do or what is supposed you are supposed to do in later chapter which is chapter four or five always is this. First you are required, if you want to do the strength of material, first it is required to find the centroid of this object. So of course, as you see, it is not symmetrical with respect to x, but it is symmetrical with respect to y. y. So you have to make a choice here. You can put your x-axis here or here on top or bottom. The most customary one is to put your x-axis here. Your y-axis, again, you have a choice, but it is silly to put your y-axis here. The y-axis should be right at the middle because it is symmetrical. So that's our system now. So this is the y-axis. Then we want to determine the location of the centroid, which I'm going to show it with a dot somewhere here. We don't know here is 200 times 25, here is 75. Maybe it's a little bit up there. So there is the location of the centroid of this object right at the middle because it's symmetrical. So therefore, since I chose this as x, so therefore this distance from centroid to this x-axis, we are going to call it y bar. Then we have to go to this equation. We don't care about the x bar because x bar is equal to zero for this y-axis. Yes or no? It's symmetrical, so x bar is zero. Now, how do we calculate y bar? Now, here was, was my question earlier, guys. What is this numerator? You said it is product of a times i. It's more than that. I say? Okay. First moment, very good. <laughs> all right, now, the, the num first of all, we are going to divide that into three area. Area one, area two, and area three. So this is the composite section method. And then denominator is very simple. Denominator is the area, yes or no? So therefore, let's put the area as from top. So 75 times 50 plus 150 times 25 plus the last one, A3, which is 200 times 25. So the denominator is very simply 
adding all the areas. Now, numerator, we call it moment, first moment, and we call it QY. Why? Uh, QX, I'm sorry, because look, it's in reverse. So QX, because you are taking moment about the X axis. The idea is this. If this was flat like that, first of all, we are assuming this plate, this plate, this plate, they are all made of the same material with the same thickness. If this doesn't work in future, we will have that in chapter four. We get a beam, part of it is wood, part of it is steel. This system doesn't work. So immediately you, it comes to your mind, oh, it has to be the same material. So why not change the wood into steel or steel into wood? So if you understand this, you understand that problem immediately. So based on that, the same material, area will be representing the weight, yes or no? Yes. If this has a weight, where would you put the weight there? You would put the weight of this object of 560. Where you would put it? You would put it here. Yes? So that numerator is the first moment of that area with respect to x-axis. And that's why we call it qx. Is that correct? We're first moment. So you want to write it down here. This is first moment. of the area, of whatever area you have, about the x-axis. Obviously, similarly, the other one is the first moment about the y-axis. So by knowing that, then the y become very, because in, the, in practice, some people use, OK, 75 times 50 represent the weight, yes or no, correct? If they are the same thickness, the same, who cares about the thickness and the density? Because they are all having the same, yes? So if you have a plate like this, and it's two square foot and one square foot, the weight of two square foot is twice as much as one, because they are made of the same thickness, the same material. Correct or not? Yes? Yeah. So if the weight is there, that's the weight, yes or no? Where do you put the weight? Here, yes or no? Of course, this weight goes usually downward, but we are assuming it's going like that, like this is flat. And the moment of that about x-axis, what distance do I need? Now look, the distance will be there. If the weight here and you take a moment about here, that distance is from here to here, yes or no, correct? So the distance is 25, 150, and 25, so that is 200, yes or no? So therefore, times 200, as if you are taking the moment of this weight about the x-axis, assuming that was flat. This is how you should have learned this stuff in the static as well, because this is really what the key is. So then we go to the second one. When we go to the second one, don't forget about this C bar. This is something that we are, we are trying to locate. This area, now the second area, this is the second area. Let's do it this way. Now, what's the mass of that? The, again, the mass represent the area, represent the mass, so that is, or the weight, so it is equal to 150 times 25. Where is the location of that mass? It is at the center. And the, what distance do I need? So you can calculate the distance immediately. That distance you need, 75 plus 25 times 100. So having this in mind, life become much simpler. You never make a mistake by this assuming you are calculating the moment about certain axes. Is that understood? Yes. And that last one is simple. The last one is how much? 200 times? 200 times 25. And then multiplied by what? The mass is here and I need this distance. Is that correct? That distance is 12 and half. Is that how you learn your static class? Yes? No. <laughs> you just fill out the form, the table. Yes? Bad. Bad idea. <laughs> Very bad idea. Everybody understand? That is the difference in how you learn this material. So I want you to do the same thing here in the strength of material. Always I'm going to talk about the concept more than the formula. I give you all the formula, all the tools in today's age with the internet, with the computer, they are available to you. You don't need to remember any of the formula or any of the, uh, the uh, equation that's given in the book, yes? Only, only you have to understand what is good for and how to use it, the most important part. This is the tool will be given to you. You know how to use it. That's what I'm talking about. 
All everybody who is using centroid, you should take this as a moment. Everybody about certain axes. Everybody, but, but that determining your all the a's or all the distances. Is that understood? Yes. Notice there is a big difference between the two. Anyhow, this ends up. I'm not going to put all the number. Then I did it for you. So it end up to be equal to 95 millimeter. So that now we solve this problem. The centroid here is somewhere here, a little bit lower. So the centroid here now is at 95 millimeter. That means this distance from here to here is 70 millimeter. And this distance, this is not in a scale, I'm sorry. That's 80 millimeter and so on and so forth because the total was 100. So question number one was answered. The centroid, everybody with a little bit of detail of that. Now question number two is the moment of inertia. Now before I go to the moment of inertia, I want to ask you a question. Now that I did that, we are going to change this x. This is x is going in static. They put an x here. They asked you to calculate moment of inertia with respect to that x axis. In a strength, that's not what we are going to do. It's the strength, when we go to chapter four, you will see anytime we do a bending design, the cross section of a beam, you need to calculate the centroid of that cross section. Then you need to take, write it down, the moment of inertia with respect to the axis that passes through the centroid, not any arbitrary axis. It has a meaning, we'll give you the name, that's the procedure. So every problem in design always start with these two. First, design a beam, design a column, even shaft will go through the same. You always have to find the centroid point. We did that. Then we remove this x. As this x does not exist, we put our x axis here, which passes now through the center. Actually, it has a name later on. We will see in chapter R. We call it neutral axis. There is a reason for it that we'll talk about it in chapter 4 or 5. That has a name that goes through the centroid, yes or no. Now, you have to calculate. The second question, this is the second question. You want to find out the moment of inertia with respect to the axis that passes through the centroid. So new axis, yes or no. Correct? So let's calculate. Now, before I do that, if I sh you see my x axis here was there, and that was the q value. If I put my x axis here, tell me this. Is the area above and area below of this x-axis are equal or not? Or should be equal or not? Yes or no? This is 6 by 2. This is 6 by 2. Do you think the centroid is there? Question. I want to know how, how you learn your centroid. Uh, this is testing, my testing to know how you learn the stuff. This is the difference in way of learning. Is the centroid there? Probably not, yes or no? Right now, the area above is six by two, the area below that C is six by two, the two area are equal. Is that the case? No. So what should be equal? In order Y bar, you see, when I put your X here, Y bar is equal to zero, yes or no? If y bar is 0, that quantity must be equal to 0 for this x-axis, not that x-axis, yes? In order this to be the x, it means that q of the above and q of the below must be equal and opposite to each other. Or total q must be equal to 0. This is, guys, see, I can see that you did not learn your static in that format. Let's say this is a seesaw. Let's say this is 20 inches and this is 20 inches and you put here an area which represents the weight exactly like that. These two areas are the same, yes or no? Let's assume these two areas are the same, correct? This is the centroid, yes? <coughs> However, if I want to move that to this area, to this, as a centroid and this become 100 and this become 300, is this the centroid? But look, the area on the left and area on the right are equal. So what is not equal? Why is it not centroid? Because of the moment. Everybody see that? This moment, if W, W times 300 is much larger than W times 100. In order this to be centroid, I need to put another W there. Is that correct? Now is that centroid? 
3w times 100 equal to 300 times w. Yes, so what is equal there? The moment, the Q, is that understand? That's the Q. You are taking moment of that with respect to your look. 3W time 100 equal to Y. That you can do it this way or you can do it vertically. And you are, you, they used this 2,000 years ago as a scale. I mentioned that in my static class. Remember those big scales that you used in the Roman time? They put one weight on one side and the lots of weight on the other side because they are balancing the moment. Yes? That's what the Q I'm talking about. This is a centroid, but look, the area is, this is three times area than that. The area should, the, you put it X through the centroid, the moment of the lower area and the moment of the first moment, the Q of lower area and the Q of above area must be equal and opposite. opposite. This is very important for future. Therefore, I can calculate that. Let's calculate that. Now for this problem, I can see that some of you are looking a little bit surprised because the other class the response was a little bit better, I must tell you that, because I want always to put you in the competition with the other class in order to get a better result. Everybody understand that? <laughs> yeah, you are, aside from you being in competition with your classmate, you are going to be in competition with the other class. So always I check that too. So remember that I have this area above, oops, it doesn't work. So no good. So I can go red. So notice the red area, you have this kind of problem in a static, which is the area above the centroid. And you have the blue area, which is the area below the centroid. I said these two area, if you check it, I don't have time to do You will see that the areas are not the same. So what is the same? Write it down one more time. The Q of above and Q, Q below must be equal on sign or opposite, like the seesaw I showed you there. And therefore, let's check that one. So if I go with the Q of the above, now notice the X is not there. X is here. This distance is 80. This distance is 50. And I'm calculating Q of these two area. Is that understood? Yes? So I can add that together. So this is the Q of above. So it's equal to 50 times 75 times what? Now you give me that second number, the third number. That's the area times. Where is the mass is here? What distance do I need to take the moment about the new x-axis? Yes or no? So what distance is that? 80 plus 25. Half of 25. The mass is here. So this is 25 plus 80. Is that correct? You are taking moment about the x-axis, remember? Correct? We call it qx. So therefore, multiply it by 105. So that is it. Now for this little red area. So that is 80 by 25 times what distance? Come on, guys, give me that distance. The mass is here. So what distance do I need? I need 40. So just one second. So if you multiply this together, if my number is correct, so if you multiply that together, you will get this number, 473,400. 73,750. What's the unit? See, that's what, again, another subject that you want to understand here. Area, come on, guys, listen to me. Area is length to the power of 2. Doesn't matter. Millimeter to the power of 2, inch to the power of 2. What is the cube? You just said it mathematically. Is area times? Distance, which we call it u. So what's the, then the unit of that? Okay. Length to the power. See, it's automatic. If you think about it, this is the logic about it. That's what I want you to think of. The logic of that tells you, since I'm multiplying area by the distance, which is like a weight that I'm doing that, but it's not weight, it's area. Because area represents the weight because it's made of the same material and the same thickness. Remember that. Yes, that is the idea behind it. Therefore, this becomes length to the power of? Three, so automatically become millimeter to the power. You don't have even to think about it because you know that. You should know that. This is the fact. We are going to use that often in ME218. And then, of course, Q of the below. You had a question now before I go very, very. Did I? Yeah, OK. Now, if you go one further, what's the mo unit of moment of inertia? Because moment of inertia is the second moment. You have to multiply it by another distance. Therefore, it become to the power of 4. So it goes from A to Q. Remember that. A, Q, 
I is that, that in that respect. We use sometimes Q in a strength of material, area, everybody knows what the area is. So it's Q is the first moment, I is the second moment or moment of inertia, which I'm going to do next. So Q of the below area, or the, in this case, blue area. Now I have this Q and that Q with respect to this exact. Now you put the number yourself, 200 times 25 is the area. Don't, you don't need to use sign. You know that this moment, like the seesaw, what that moment, if this moment goes like that, this moment goes like this. Everybody understand it? Yes or no? Correct? Because that's the idea of the right hand rule. Okay, 200 times 25 times what? What distance? This is the center. What distance do I need? 70 plus 12 and a half. So that is 82 and a half. Correct. So 82 and a half plus this little area, yes or no? That little area is 70 times 25 times what? Times 35, I'm glad, okay. So when you do that calculation at home, you will see that for this end up to 473,750 millimeters. That means our 95 is correct because the Q of above and Q of the below with respect to the neutral axis must be equal and Opposite, yes or no? Don't forget that for when we get to later chapter. Is that understood? Can I erase that now? Yes? Now the next is moment of inertia, which of course requires parallel axis theory. So again, I, let's calculate Ix. I'm going to bypass Iy because Iy, we don't need that. So Ix equal to, what? I just put the number there just to show you one more time how this works, but then the number is not essential here. So Ix is equal to, actually if you look at it, this, one, this is one of the quizzes, by the way, I forgot to ask. If, uh, this is one of the quizzes I have asked a student to do in the past. If you go to the quiz page, you will see that picture there. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. Go to the page <coughs> handout. Go to page, I don't know what page. Go, go, go further. Go. Last pages, last couple of pages go through. I don't, I just, you go, no, 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 no. There, to page 14, you see that picture there? I should have mentioned that. Is that everybody see that picture exactly <coughs> like that? Yes? Yeah? That's part of a question, not the whole question. You have 15 minutes to do all of that, plus the first part of it. But you, you can do it when you do your homework, of course. Yes? After you do the homework or practice this, then you can do all of that easily. Everybody understood that. Now, Ix. What is Ix? I need Ix area 1, Ix of area 3, and Ix of area 2. Let's do the first one. Now, how do I do that? First, I had need to the centroid. That's the centroid, and this is x prime. Is that correct or not? The x prime passes through the centroid of A1, don't worry about it. I just wanted to know that this type of question is going to be asked from you in the first quiz, yes? So there, what is I act? Concentrate on this one, I don't want you to miss there. What is I x prime first? You see that you need I x prime, which is passes through the centroid, which is 112, I already gave it to you. 112 of base time, height cubic, yes or no? So it is 112 of base. What is the base? Base is? This area, base is 75, you are quiet. <laughs> All right, times what? I need input, 50 to the power of three, but that's not sufficient. That's the moment about x prime, and I'm taking moment about the x, so the, therefore requires parallel axis. Theorem, the distance between the two axes is d. Is that correct or not? Plus the area, area which is 75 times 50, times distance squared, distance is here, we already calculated that. That's 80 plus, 80 plus 25, that is 105 to the power of two, don't forget that. So it becomes millimeters to the power of four, everybody. That is the moment of inertia of area one. Let's do moment of a a area of the third one, so this is for the second one. This is for the third one. The third one is easy, so I'm doing that first. Is that correct? What's the moment of inertia of this with respect to that x-axis with the same routine? Again, I have to put a x prime axis here, yes or no? Correct? Do you guys remember your parallel axis theory? Yes or no? 
If you don't do that, you could not pass this class. Parallel access theory is an essential part. It's like calculating area. Okay? Anytime you are designing something, later on in this, uh, this book, moment of inertia replaces the area. Everybody understand that. As simple as you calculate the area of a circle or a square or a rectangular, you should be able to calculate moment of inertia. This week is the best week to refresh your memory or do whatever learning you do. If you went to a static without learning this, it's no good. Notice what I put here. Three subjects. Equilibrium, centroid, and the moment of these are the most important part that is going to be repeated again and again and again. So don't be surprised. I can see some surprises in your eyes. By the way, throughout the course, I look into your eyes. I want you to look into my eyes. I know exactly, <laughs> exactly how my, my lecture registered to you. I can see it immediately. So don't hide anything from me. So don't put your head down. I want to look <laughs> into your eyes. This is the technique. I have worked before, so I hopefully work with you guys. Because if I don't see that, it is not there is some problem there, I may explain it one more time. Everybody understand what I'm saying there. So therefore, now the third one, I need the moment of inertia with respect to this x prime, which is again 112 of base time, height cubic, yes or no? So it is 112 of base, which is 200 times 25, because that is routine. Plus again, there is a distance between x prime and x, because we are taking moment of inertia with this. This is the question I asked you to do, yes or no? So therefore, the distance again is 70 plus 12, and so 82 and a half. So area, I need the area, 200 times 20, times distance square, which is 82 and a half, that's right, to the power of 2, so you can calculate that. Now remaining the middle part. So remember that you have to do exactly the same thing here too. So if I consider it at one piece, uh, still I have to write 112 of base. Base is 25 times height is 153. However, does this x passes through the centroid of that piece? No. It passes through the centroid of the whole object, but the centroid of this piece only, this piece, is where? This is 150. Where is the centroid of that one? 150 is 75. So I have a 5 millimeter distance. That's my distance between the two axes. Yes or no? Everybody see what I'm talking about? Yes? So there are, you see, this is the centroid of A1. This is centroid of A2. You need the centroid of A3, which is at 75 and 75. Everybody understand? So there is a distance of? Five millimeters, so you have to use that. Plus the area, so plus 25 times 150. I'm sorry, that's the area times 150. But that has to be multiplied only by 5 to the power of 2. So that will be your Ix. Iy is simple. I'm not going to do it or don't waste your time. So that is the centroid. This is the review of the Q centroid moment of inertia. Yes. A little bit louder, please. Oh, could you just explain um, the, where you got the 5 and the A2.5? 5, five. yes. All right, so this is, I put it here a little bit bigger. Is that correct or not? Where is our total centroid? Not, first of all, this is 150. Where is the centroid of this page? Shape is here. So here should be 75, here should be. But where is our x-axis that I'm taking a moment about? Is it there? Look, the distances are given. It is 70 and 80. So where is the x-axis? The x-axis is here. See that? So the distance, this become your x prime, and this is your x, that the distance is 5. The set, this, that blue dot is the centroid of the entire picture. It's not the centroid of that. Seven, centroid of 150 by 25 is at 75. Everybody knows that. Yes? Okay? All right? All right, good. Everybody clear about that? Okay, now let's go to the <coughs> first example now. What the discussion that we have here, which is very important, you guys know, this is the first time we are going through the strength of material. This was our static. So I'm going to erase that. Now the first subject that I, I want to discuss with you guys, which is not in the book, but this is very important. Actually, it is in chapter seven of your static book, is 
external load versus internal, I call it actions, not load, because that gives you a different idea there. Now, there is a big difference between a static and a strength of material, and you have to understand that. That's exactly what's sitting there, external load versus external. Example, let me give you an example here that you will see what happened there when we do this kind of problem. Let's say we have here a beam here. Everybody should draw that. Let's say this beam is eight foot long. It is a pin here, a roller there. And I say the weight of this beam is 100 pound per foot. How do you find the reaction? This is such a simple ABCs of a static. Everybody knows that. So what's the weight of the beam? Now I just want to show you a very important factor here. The weight of the beam is 800, yes or no? 100 pounds per foot. It's 8 feet. It is 800. Where do you put it? At the middle of the beam, because it's the same weight. Is that, that's no problem there. Don't be, this, don't be surprised. Some of you are surprised. Maybe you are afraid to say that. That is something you have done it many, many times, even in high school. Yes or no? Yes. yes? So you put the 800 pound there, so don't worry about it. I'm not talking about this yet. Because that is the total weight, W, is equal to 100 pound per foot, multiplied by 8 feet. Feet and feet drops out, so it's 800 pounds. You put it at the centroid, and then you calculate the reaction. Now you are removing this. You calculate the reaction here and here. It is symmetrical, so this becomes 400 pounds. This is 800 pounds, and this is 400 pounds because it's symmetrical. Yes or no? This, you have done it many, many times. Yes or no? That's no problem there. The problem is this. In a strength of material, we do the same thing when we want to calculate the reaction, which is fine. Now let's say somebody wants to, because this object, first of all, in a static, uh, objects usually were rigid body. If you go to chapter four or five, I don't remember, a static for chapter four, it was the equilibrium of rigid fine. body. Right now, you are not any longer rigid body. If I have a beam like that, you put the, your hand, you put a load there at the mid, like that, put a load at the middle. This object is going to, Bend. If this was a rigid body, it would not be going to bending. Is that correct? And that bending is the issue we want to address in future, chapter 4 and chapter 4. Now, when you look at this, the bending are different from this point to this point to that point. Somewhere is going to go down more than the other side. So we have to go to go inside the body and see what is happening in this body. This body, this is what we are going to do in the next few classes. Hold it with you. It's going to be like that. Pull it. This is purely tension. We are going to do week one or two. Then we can put it like a column and push it down, which would be purely, don't look at it. That's a buckling. That's ME219. We talk <laughs> about that. <laughs> OK, that is, if this was purely compression, it would be compressed down, yes or no. Chapter one and two, this is the preview of coming attraction, guys. So pre <laughs> would be about tension and Compression or two force member, depending what's happening inside the body, which we call it a stress, a strain, etc., etc., all of that coming in future. Then in chapter three, instead of force, we are going to apply a moment. Look at my thumb, a moment like that, not moment like that. Moment like that, which is a moment about x axis. Look what happened to this object. This object is going to be twisted. We call it torsion or twist. Is that good? That's chapter three. In chapter Four, which I was just showing it, the object is going, look at the moment, the change. This is this moment now. This moment causes this to bend. That's chapter four and five. Chapter six is something else, and chapter seven, we put it all together, so we just have fun together. Let's put it this way. Anyhow, so what I'm saying that you have to go inside the body, which you have done it in a static once, remember? In a static, when you went to the trusses, you were determining the internal tension or Compression. Remember the internal forces, you were cutting it and finding the internal. That's exactly what we are doing here. However, look what problem I have here. Let's say that this is four feet and four feet, and I want to go here three feet here and make a cut here and determine what is happening inside the 
body of the material, because that determines the strength of material to go to which chapter to go. Now, if I draw it like that, this is three feet, and here I put 400 pound. There is no here forces here. There is a force here, 400. Is that correct? Is that correct? What about the weight of the beam? You see that? That 800, you have to put that, is because you were looking at entire system. This you cannot do. You have to go back to the original system. The original system is this, guys. A uniform load of, now be very careful, a uniform load of intensity of how much? 100 pound per foot, because this beam and the other beam are going to deflect differently. Everybody understand that. Now, if I cut it at three feet, how much load do I have there? 300. Everybody understand what I'm saying that. So that balance, so that changes the scenario. So now don't write it that. All I want you to understand that, that there is the 300 here. Then we are going to find out the internal forces at this point, which will be either horizontal force or Vertical force or a moment. moment, exactly. So instead of, now, now that you understand, remember, always do it this way. That's the, you, your problem number 9 and 11 is all about that. For a static purposes, you can put one single load. But when you want to cut the beam, you have to go to original, back to original load. The load could be uniform, it could be in triangle load, slope load, etc., etc. It could be even a parabola that you have to do integration. Everybody understand what I'm saying that. So if you are looking at the weight of the wing of an airplane, it's not a constant. It must be some, some parabola, yes or no. So then you have to use the integration. You learn it all about that. Now let's go to an example in the book, in the handout. But I'm going to put it there. I don't want you to look at the solution. We are the subject still is internal action. So this is the, the structure. There is a beam here, A, B, C. It's a pin connection at A. And also it is a pin connection at rod here. This is C, this is D, and this is pin connection to the wall. These two are at the same level. And this distance is six feet. That is uh, four feet and four feet, exactly what I said there. And the load here is a uniform load, so we are considering the weight of the top beam. We are not considering the weight of this one for neglecting that. And the weight is given 50 pounds per foot. This is the question, and we want to calculate the internal actions at point B. Why are you guys are standing there outside for looking for out the window? What's the problem there? Let's let me check those. <laughs> you want to come in? You are welcome. <laughs> Why are you standing there watching? We're wanting to listen. Yeah. For next class, okay. <laughs> All right. OK. So how do we do that, guy? We want to calculate the internal forces. What should I do first? You know that from a static. You have to find the reaction at all the support. Yes, first. Yes? All right. So of course, you have to draw free body diagram of the member, let's say, ABC. Correct? This is the free body diagram. Come on, guys. These are basic static. That we are not talking about here. At point A, it is a pin. So what should I put at point A, guys? AX and AY. AY. Now, how do I do the load there? Remember, the load is a uniformly distributed load of 50 pounds per foot. Now, if I want only reaction, I can replace it with one single load. What's that single load? That single load is 50 times 8, so it is 400. So I can put here at 400, right at the middle, 400 pounds here. Now we come to this point. That point seems to be a, a pin. It is CX and CY. However, Looking at member CD, member CD is a two-force member, so the force should be in the direction of CD, so I should not put there 
two forces. I should put one force in the direction of CD, which the slope is, as you see it there, the slope is four run, three rise, because eight and six, which is the same. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now, do you think this item is under tension or compression? This is first lesson of a strength of material. Is it under tension? Is it going to be crushed or is it going to be expanded? What do you think? Putting a load on top. Crushed. So it should be in compression. All, if I put it in tension mode, the answer will come negative, remember? But since I know it, absolutely it is in compression, I'm going to put it in compression mode, knowing the answer comes positive. Is that understood? So which side is for compression, upward or downward? Have you all got past ME 2814? Not in my class. Come on, guys. Going toward the joint is compression. Going away from the joint is in tension. Yes or no? You know it. Don't be afraid. Express it. I want you to participate. Everybody understand that. Yes? If you know it, that's okay. If you don't, that's a good too. It doesn't matter. We can, the reason I'm saying that because I want everybody to be on board. You either knew it or no. When you give me the wrong answer, that's good too. Because if I correct you, never for you never forget it. <laughs> you understand what the process works. That's what I'm saying. That don't be afraid. You are a student. You are in class. You need to make a mistake, but you have to commit yourself to something. Everybody under this either 50-50 chance that you are either correct or <laughs> incorrect. However, that's the learning process. So um, you are learning there, but these are something, of course, you should know it from the past. Yes, so let's call it FCD. Is that correct? So that's the F in member CD, right? The rest now is very simple. Now I have only three unknowns, so I can solve it. Yes or no? By taking moment about point A, of course. You see the rest? This is the free body diagram, the most essential part of your analysis in every structure. So free body diagram. You cannot bypass that. So sigma m at or about a equal to 0 will give you nothing there. So you give you, this is 4 feet, and that's 4 feet. So there is 400 times 4, and that is negative because it's going clockwise. Then here it has two components. Horizontal component doesn't have any more because the, that, that load goes through this point. I didn't draw it correctly, but it goes through that point. So let's say pin is there, let's say that. So therefore, since it goes through that, so the horizontal this, the component doesn't have a load. Where, I mean the moment and the vertical component has a moment, but vertical component is 3 fifth, yes or no? So therefore, 3 fifth of the force FCD, time distance of 8, and it's this way, so it goes that way, therefore it is positive become equal to zero. This is the force, that's the distance. You calculate FCD, become equal to 333.3. Usually we go three digit. However, here I went to four digit to calculate FCD. As soon as you calculate FCD, you can calculate AX and AY, AY which is not a big deal here. Everybody can do that, so let me give you the answer. So AX become equal to minus 266.7 pound, and AY, actually become 200 pounds. So this is the extent of a static, which everybody can do if you can draw, of course, the correct free body diagram, correct? Now next, the question that we are, I'm raising to do, what happened if I cut it at point B? Now look, point B is here. First of all, you have a big problem. If 400 is right on top of point, B, but is that a correct assumption, putting the 400 there? I just already mentioned that. That's, that, that's invalid. Everybody know that. So if I want to cut it, I have to go back to that. So we go back here and make a cut here. Everybody understand. So you have some load on the left, some load on the, some part of a load, depend where you are. Here we are at the middle. So therefore, next is free body diagram of a, B. So we are going to put it in the middle here. So here it is. The free body diagram of A. Now, what force do I have at A? The force do I have at A has already been determined. It's a negative 266.7. So this rod has a 200 points going this way. Yes or no? Correct? Let's go step by step before I put anything else. That requires here to do what? This is point B. 
Let's forget about anything else because I haven't put the rest of it. Because of this force, I should have an internal force going to the rod. So this beam or this rod is under tension or compression. Tension of 266.7, which will be the subject of next two lectures. Everybody, the rest of those problems are like that. So here, I put here a force here. Now, in the static, you call this BX, BY, and MB, yes? Change that. That's going to change now. It's not BX. It has a name. This force is normal to the cross-section, yes or no? Therefore, we call it normal force. So please, normal force gives you normal stress. Normal stress gives normal strain. Anytime you have a section, you have a column, all the load coming on the section. Everybody understand that is force pushing the column down. Everybody, this force, it's not BX anymore. It, we call it NB. Normal, why normal one more time? Normal to cross section to the cross-section of the beam. Everything is about the cross-section in ME218. Write it down in your note. Every material that we are talking about is about the cross-section of an object and is, of course, length come into the picture. Don't get me wrong, the length determines everything. But when you design something, this column has certain cross-section. Why this is this big? Because there is lots of load on it. If it was less load, the cross-section become Smaller. Everybody understand what I'm saying? The leg of this chair you are sitting there is about three quarter of an inch diameter. Everybody understand? If you put a giant here, you have to make it four inch diameter. Everybody understand what I'm saying? The weight determining the, uh, the usefulness of the idea. Nevertheless, this is normal force. Do not, please do not make it BX, BY, BZ. This is normal force and this force will be what? This force going up on the other side will be going down. So it will be shear forces. Everybody, the one that in the section, we are going to shear curse We generally say it like that. So these are, they have name. Of course, you said there is a moment. Other words, it will not be in equilibrium. This is MB2. Now, the first two classes, we are going to go through the normal forces and shear forces. Actually, next subject, if I had 10 more minutes, I would talk about normal forces and shear forces and stresses due to that. Now, hold on one second. BB, right? well, upward or downward? What? It's BB, right? VB, yes. Okay. All right, and then MB. So now, chapter one, Chapter 1 and 2 is about these two, everybody other. Chapter 3, we don't have it here because we don't have a torsion here. Chapter 4 and 5 is about the bending, and as I said, that at the end. Now, let's put the load there. The load here was how much? Now, this is only 4 feet. So the load is like that. I just put it in dash line because I don't want that. So how much load is that now? The load is 4 feet times what? Time 50, so it is only 200, because it's half of the beam. Yes, so where do I put that 200? At the center, like that. This is 200 pounds, and the distance is, is 2 feet and 2 feet, because that's the center of the rectangle. This is the loading system. That free body diagram does not show it. Everybody understand that. Don't make that mistake. Is that understood? Okay, okay. now everything is simple. So what's the value of NB? NB will be 266.7 pound, and it is in the tension mode. So if it was like this, it would be in the compression mode. What is the shear force? Oh, I'm sorry, we forgot something here. There was an AY here. See, through this discussion, I forgot to put there. So let's remove this and do it correctly. So there was a 200, this was AY as well. Is that correct or not? Yes? But notice, if you look at your handout, they put this one downward, not upward. So be careful here. You have a choice to put it. There is a reason for it. I cannot explain it that to you. Actually, I will explain it to you later on. For time being, you are going only by static. Either put it upward or downward. The answer comes according to where you put it. Is that correct? Or but if you want to, to, to understand that, we have to wait until we talk about the, sh the shear and what happened to the sign of that. Everybody understands. Sign of the normal force is very simple. If it is tension, we call it plus. You have seen it in the static. If it is compression, we call it minus. It, not a statically plus or minus. It's just because it's pull or push. So that we talk about that later on. Today we don't have time. Let's calculate. So NB, of course, is 266.7 
pound and it is in tension. If I want to calculate shear force, I have to write sigma Fy equal to zero. Yes or no? Correct? Sigma Fy equal, this was sigma Fx, it, it, but I did not use it. Sigma Fy equal to plus 200 minus 200 plus shear at B. Of course, shear at B at that time become equal to zero because the balance is zero there. Is that correct or not? Yes? And then the moment. How do I calculate the moment? The last. This is for chapter four and five. How do we calculate moment? Notice these blue ones are internal. Remember, the subject was external versus internal. In, in, in ME 218, all the chapter is all about this blue one and what happens to the object here due to this blue one. Is that understood? Which, in fact, I'm going to tell you is not the real load. That real load has to be in the different format. We talk about the stresses, etc., etc. But statics tell me I should have something like that. Is that correct or not? Yes? And then if I want to calculate the M, where should I take the moment about? Take the moment about point, we usually, this is the difference from a static now. This time, because I want to avoid all of that, you should always take the moment about point B, not the point A. Again, this is different from a static. Notice here I took the moment about A because I wanted the reaction. That was a static. This is the strength now. I take all, we always take the moment because you don't want these two to appear in your equation everybody so take the moment about point b where you cutting it so sigma m where should i put it here so i can erase that no. sigma m become sigma m at b equal to zero so you have 200 times four going negative this one doesn't have any moment plus 200 times two this way positive, plus, don't forget, there is MB sitting there, yes or no? Plus MB, correct? Equal to zero. Now, I want you to understand that this is totally different from that. Some people in this class, even in ME 219, they make a mistake between the two. MB is the amount of moment sitting at that section, yes or no? Sigma MB equal to zero means taking moment about point B, and summing it up, everybody understand. I have made that very clear in static. Unfortunately, some of you eventually make, make a mistake. That means this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, this, if they have any. And this together must be equal to zero. Everybody clear about that, yes? So as you see, it ends up like that. Many people write this and say equal to MB or some, they think MB equal to zero because they said they write it like that. They think this is MB. Some people write it like that, totally right. When we put sigma M at B, this is a sentence summation of the moment about point B equal to zero. Everybody understand again that part of it, correct? All right, so did you see what I did here? So MB become equal to, MB become 400 positive, because this goes on the pound foot. That means that direction is Correct, therefore beam is going to bend like this, not like that. Yes, which is it. How much time do we have? I don't want to know what happened. There. Two minutes? Uh, how much? Uh, we're, out, we're over by two minutes. It's two minutes, over? It's 10.32. 10.32, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next thing, the first thing we are going to do next, next class, which is now looking at FCD, everybody under, and then this rod will be only under tension or compression in these cases. Come to then I talk about the stresses, the strain, etc., etc., about members, which purely is the strength of material. Correct. Okay, I'll let you go this time. All right then. <laughs>